hope you guys have had a terrific summer. Um, I'll try to keep it brief and not uh, give an infomercial up here uh, for Maryland. Uh, but I'll start with this. Anyone who knows me knows from the time I got into this business 27 years ago that the Maryland football job was the job I coveted. Um, I've said this before, and I'm going to keep saying it. This is a dream come true for my family and I to be able to come home and coach the university that I grew up rooting for as a kid. I'm going to tell you a quick story, and it kind of summarizes uh, me and my career. You know, at my house, we have uh, these wood plaques, and they're hung up in our kitchen in chronological order. And these plaques represent all the different places I've coached. And at the top of the 11 plaques, I think it is now, it says, home is wherever football takes us. Well, just recently, I added my third Maryland plaque at the bottom, and I hope it's the, the last plaque that I add to my... Uh, uh, to my home. But what I learned is that these plaques symbolize so many great emotions and memories that my family and I have from being a part of college football and from the, the people that we've been, uh, 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 we've been able to meet through all these journeys. And, you know, what a great opportunity for me to learn, grow, and develop as a coach. And I mean, I've worked at small places like my alma mater, Towson State, to competing for national championships like I did at Alabama. And so, as they like to say, the old saying, a third time is a charm, I'm hoping that's the case here for me at Maryland. You know, there's been three main messages that I've, uh, me and the coaching staff, has hammered home with our staff since we took over six months ago. And the first thing we wanted to do was we wanted to create this family culture. And, and by doing this, you know, to me, team has a shelf life. Teams change from year to year, whereas family, to me, transcends our past with our present as well as our future. And so we wanted to create a family environment and a family culture uh, to get our program moving forward. Um, the second thing we've done is we've stabilized the program. We all know about what happened last year, and it was really important for us to come in and, one, do a really good job of developing a meaningful relationship with our players. I can't tell you how many Sunday fun days I've had at my house with the team, and I know my coaches have taken a personal interest in each of the players at their positions. And what that does is it builds trust. And trust is a great, uh, a huge component for being able to stabilize the program. The next thing we've done is that we've also did everything we could to have a great respectful communication as well as an open door policy with our players and I think that's important because if you ever raise kids you know this when all the kids in your neighborhood are hanging at your house you've got a pretty good home and what I've found since we've taken over our players are always around our offices they're always upstairs and with our coaching staff and that to me tells me that we've really moved in the right direction of stabilizing it and then the last thing is we've really painted a really clear concise picture of what our expectations are and how we want to do our business. And it starts with developing the right kind of behaviors. Um, you, we use the term maximize it around our place. And, and here's what maximize it means. And if you talk to any of our players, they'll tell you that maximize it means we want to be really intentional with our behaviors and that whatever it is that we're doing at that particular time is the most important thing we do. If you're in the classroom, be where your feet are and be very intentional about taking something from the classroom. If you're in a meeting before practice, be there. If you're at practice, let's make sure all of our energies and efforts and behaviors are right where we are at that time. And at the end of the day, what we want our players to do is, and it's something that I do, is at night, if you've maximized it, like we talk about, when you lay your head down on a pillow at night, you know that you've lived a full day and, and you've done it the right way with the right behaviors and the right intentions. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you this, that we're very fortunate as a university to be a part of the Big Ten Conference, and, and, and I want to thank Commissioner Jim Delaney for all that he's done, not just for the Big Ten, but also for college football as a whole. You know, this is my second time back in the Big Ten, and what, Co what Commissioner Delaney has done of keeping the Big Ten in the forefront of college athletics with the combination of academic excellence as well as, as, well as athletic excellence uh, is great for the game. And I want to thank him for that. And I also want to welcome, you know, Kevin Warren in 
And I know that he'll do a tremendous job of continuing to move the Big Ten uh, to where we are at the top of college athletics with the vision and, and, and the efforts it takes to be a great conference. Uh, this summer, we put in a bunch of work with our players, not just with playbooks, and we've done a lot of things from life skills that we think will help and benefit our players off the field to where they can have future success, and we've done a really good job of trying to build their resumes outside of just football. You know, one of the benefits of being located where we are is the use of two of the largest media markets, and, or one of the largest media markets, two of the best job markets, the D.C. Baltimore corridor, and our players have taken full advantage of, of being located where we are. Uh, our players are excited and I speak for all of us when I tell you that we're excited about the start of the season and we're looking forward to uh, seeing our fans pack Maryland Stadium on August 31st when we open up with Howard University. Um, again, and I also want to thank you guys for the, the job you do as the media of telling such positive stories about our program. And we look forward to uh, continuing to give you guys great stories uh, in the near future. And with that, I will open it up to any questions. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand. We'll send a microphone your way. Again, please stand up, state your name and affiliation. We'll begin in the third row on the right here, Coach. Hey, Mike, Teddy Greenstein from the Chicago Tribune. Probably an easy question, but why was Maryland your dream job? Well, Teddy, you've known me for a while, and you remember all those Maryland, D.C. guys we brought to Illinois back in the day. Um, it started as a kid growing up, you know. A lot of people don't understand, but, you know, I grew up in an era in the 70s, the mid-70s, where Maryland was a giant in college athletics and football, and they had an undefeated team in 76 when I was seven years old and had a three- or four-year run there. And then as I matured and grew up and became a teenager, the mid-80s from 83, 84, 85, having an opportunity to see the Boomer Esiasens, Frank Wright, Neil O'Donnell, Stan Gelball, all these great quarterbacks and players that uh, were great players. And again, Maryland was a giant in college football at that time. And then I had the fortune of being a part of the Renaissance year of uh, 2001 through three when Ralph Friesen came in and we won a conference championship and we won 10 games a year for three straight years and produced great players like Vernon Davis, Sean Merriman, you know, Lamont Jordan, E.J. Henderson, a bunch of great players. And so that's the Maryland that I know. And I know a lot of people outside of that DMV area don't understand, but we have a history of a uh, tradition of, of great success, and it's a great university. Next question for Coach Loxley over on the right. Uh, Emily Jambaba from the Washington Post. Mike, just how did, how did you approach when you got the job, the, the transfer situation, especially getting some guys in, in the key positions? And there's a lot of conversation about the transfer portal, but as a, as a coach taking over the program, how does that streamline the process? Well, I think the big thing when I first took over was to – uh, manage our current roster and I know when I took the job over we had quite a few guys that had entered the transfer portal prior to me becoming the head coach and you know one of the things I did the, the first day after being hired is I, I kind of I call it speed dating I met with every player for about 15 minutes and I asked them what they liked about being a Maryland football player and I asked them what they didn't like. And, uh, you know, I, I took great notes and, and really worked on starting to develop a relationship. But I also had a game plan in my mind as to things we would need to correct. And very fortunate that, you know, I was only three years removed from being a coach there. And, you know, we've lost, I think, maybe one or two players uh, through the transfer portal. And on the flip side of it, because of some of the relationships I've built throughout my career and coaching at other places, I've uh, been very fortunate to take advantage of the transfer portal where we've got the likes of players like Josh Jackson coming in, a starting quarterback from Virginia Tech that has won a lot of games and has great game experience. Uh, Shaq Smith transferring in from Clemson, Keandre Jones from Ohio State. Uh, Sean Savoy from Virginia Tech. And so we've been able to maybe fill some gaps and fill some holes that uh, will help us uh, do the things that we need to do to try to become successful. We'll stay over here on the right. Oh, Coach, Joe Dempsey, Buckeye Sports Bulletin. Hey, Joe. I wanted to ask you about Keandre Jones and the transfer portal. Um, how do you see that? How important is that as a first-year coach to build your program through the portal? And how do you see him being a part of your program? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't say that it, it's a, a definite need when building a program to go to transfer portal route because it's really important, one, that you bring in the right kind of guys that fit what you want to do. Uh, obviously, I had a very personal, uh, strong relationship with Keandre. Uh, he had committed to Maryland when I was there back in 15, along with Dwayne Haskins. And uh, when I left to go to Alabama, I know they decided to go elsewhere. But what Keandre brings to the table for us is just having been a part of a, a winning program you know, I like to say success leaves clues, and Keandre's been able to bring some of those clues with him and how he teaches our players as an older player that has had great success at a high level like I've had as a coach, the behaviors and habits that you need to create to, 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 to get to where you can be successful as a program. And I really like the work ethic that he brought to the table. He kept his mouth shut, and he's really earned the respect of our team with his leadership. Uh, based on how he works and the, the behaviors and habits that he has. We'll go a couple rows right in front of you, Coach. Hey, Coach. Keith Jenkins with the Associated Press. How are you? Um, you talked about this being your dream job. How great is it to you being the first black coach in the history of Maryland? Is that more important to you? And also, from a historic perspective, is that first game against Howard uh, super important to you as well? Um, you know, the, the, the whole black head coach thing obviously is, is a, a, a horse we've ridden for a long time. And as I've said before, uh, I think it's important only that I be successful as a black head coach at the University of Maryland. And the only way that happens is with me, uh, again, like I teach our players, having the behaviors and habits that it takes to be successful and win. You know, obviously, Howard University is right there in our backyard. I grew up there in the city. Uh, I remember Howard University winning the mythical championship in 87 and Harvey Reed and some of these great players that have come from it. And so for us to be able to play a, a local a local school like Howard, it's really important, but it's really important because it's the first game of, uh, of our season. And that's where all of our energy and efforts have been uh, uh, pushing toward and we're definitely looking forward to having Howard uh, come to Maryland Stadium and, and, and compete on August 31st. One final question over on the left hand side. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, uh, CNHI Sports Indiana. Coach, what did you learn from your time working under Nick Saban and how do you think it, you matured from your time since your last head coaching stint at New Mexico? Um, you know, you get the question asked often. Um, we need a whole nother two hour uh, session for me to talk about the things I learned um, uh, from Nick. But what I will tell you, as I said, with those plaques that I described, I think each one of my experiences have uh, given me an opportunity to learn, grow, and, 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 and move forward as a head coach. But if I learned anything from Coach Saban, it's one, consistency in your messaging. Um, he talks about the process. I call it behaviors and habits. Uh, he also, we do a thing called quality control. And I think that is a huge thing because people think when you have the success we had at Alabama under Coach Saban that it's easy. But it's so hard to teach your players when you're having success. And I know he oftentimes says, hey, don't waste a failure. But when we have had success, we still go back and we still went back and looked at why it was successful. And we asked the tough questions of how we can make it better. And so for me, I love the term success leaves clues and uh, you know, don't waste a failure. And I'm gonna take all the clues I learned at Alabama, implement them, uh, have our players learn the behaviors and habits to be not result oriented, but to be process oriented. And if we can focus on learning and having those types of habits and behaviors, I, I see Maryland being able to reach the success that we all want. Coach, thank you very much.